بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم Today we're going to talk about the 26th greater sin in the book Greater Sins by Ayatollah Dastagayb Shirazi which is taking the rights of other people or not fulfilling the rights that are due upon you so non-fulfillment of another's right without a valid excuse is listed as the 26th greater sin in this book. So if a person <clears throat> who has some right upon somebody else and demands his right, but the one whom the obligation rests on does not fulfill his right, even though he has capability of doing it, then this person has created a greater sin. So we owe someone something. We have the capability to pay that thing or fulfill that debt, but we don't do it. We're negligent of it. This is considered as a greater sin. Non-fulfillment of rights of great uh, non-fulfillment of rights of other people as a greater sin is mentioned in Holy Quran, mentioned in Ahadith, and is quoted from Imam Sadiq, Imam Rida alayhi salam as uh, on the list of greater sins. <coughs> So, we have to honor our trust. We have to honor our word. When, why would someone want to come and join a religion whose people are dishonorable, untrustworthy? This is a question we have to ask ourselves. And we don't learn this behavior from uh, religion. We know that our Prophet ﷺ was known as Al-Amin, the trustworthy, and he's the best example sent for mankind to follow. So we should try to be trustworthy ourselves. Imam Sadiq salam, says, One who does not fulfill the rights of a believer and does not repay what is owed to him, on the day of judgment, Allah will make him stand for 500 years and blood or sweat will ooze through his body. The announcer from Allah will call out, This is the oppressor who has not fulfilled the right of Allah. Then after being admonished for another 40 days, it will be ordered for him to be thrown into the fire. Said those who admonish him will either be believers or prophets. Alama Majlisi uh, explains this hadith that he says that if a sinner's oppression is not very serious, then it will be sweat that flows from his body. But if his oppression is of a serious nature, then blood will seep out of him. Alama Majlisi further states that this tradition proves the right of a believer is considered as the right of Allah. Allah has ordered to restore the believer's right. Disobeying this command is just like taking the right of Allah. The hadith continues, On the day of resurrection, a caller will announce, Where are those who oppressed and tortured the friends of Allah? Some people will stand up. They will not be having any flesh on their faces. It will be said, these are the ones who tortured the believers, bore enmity towards them, dealt harshly with them due to their belief. It will be ordered that they will be thrown into the hellfire. Imam Sadiq salam, swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says that these people had the same belief as the believers, but they didn't respect their rights and they exposed the secrets of the believers. We see that not respecting the rights of others is just, uh, you know, uh, is such a serious sin, such a serious thing that it will earn a person a position in the hellfire, even if they were Muslims. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he said that a believer who has something and another believer is in need of that thing and the former does not fulfill the need of the needy believer, he will not ever taste the food or the drink of paradise. So it shows it's very important. We shouldn't look at it as something small. That, okay, we owe someone and, you know, no big deal. Uh, they'll get over it. They'll forgive us. We shouldn't pay them. But no, we need to be, you know, very careful in this regard. And when we owe someone something, we need to fulfill the rights of the believers. Imam Sajjad salam, says, On the day of resurrection, a person will be caught by his hand, and the people of the gathering will be told that anyone who has a claim upon him can come and secure his right. On the day of resurrection, this would be the most difficult ordeal to face. 
Every person will avoid meeting with his relatives, his friends, and will be in constant fear of the demands that they might make on him. Perhaps this is what Quran alludes to in the ayat in Surah Abasa, ayat 34 through 36, the day on which a man will flee from his brother, his mother, his father, and his spouse, and his son. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi asked his sahaba, do you know who the actual poor person is? They said one who has no money, no property, no treasure, no house. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said, there is no poor person in my ummah except the one who has performed salat, performed uh, fasting. He has paid zakat, he has done hajj, but on day of judgment, a person will come whose property he had taken, a person whose blood he has shed, another one whom he had beaten. Then the good deeds of this man will be transferred to the one who he owes the rights to. If his good deeds are not present or he, he ran out of good deeds because he wronged the person so much, he gave him all his good deeds and now he is finished. The, the prophet says, if his good deeds are exhausted before all the rights are fulfilled, then the sins of those who have rights upon him will be added to his sins. Then he will be thrown in the fire. So those who talk bad and backbite other people will also have to give their good deeds to those whose rights they have trampled. Imagine having prayed and fasted and done hajj and all of these good deeds, but because of all the rights we have taken from people and how we have dealt with others, it will result in us going to the hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. Also, when people speak about you, they talk bad about you, don't worry about it. Because they're only adding their good deeds to yours. And if they have no good deeds, then they will take some sins or some shortcomings from your list of shortcomings and sins. Anything owed by a person is a debt that he has to repay. The full amount of money loan has to be paid as per the agreement of the payment schedule. The same applies to an item that is sold but not delivered. The seller is obliged to deliver the goods to the buyer on time. Similarly, one who has taken something on hire is responsible for it. A husband is indebted to his wife until he pays the mahar or the dowry. The husband is also responsible for the maintenance of his wife that he has nikah with. The laws of guarantee are a lot, but this is sufficient for this class. Loans are of two types. One is not bound by a time limit or when the date of payment has already expired. The other type of loan has a fixed time for repayment of that loan. The creditor cannot demand the loaned property before the due date. If the person who took the loan dies, all the debts owed by him are due immediately. For example, a person borrowed something for one year, but he dies before the end of the year. His heirs have to pay this money immediately. If it's no excuse that the time of payment didn't come or this or that, but if the creditor dies, his heirs don't have the right of demanding the loan before the time is due. For example, a person loaned someone one hundred dollars and then the person who loaned the money uh he loaned he loaned it to them and says uh the loan is for one year and then one month later he dies the person who loaned the money the heirs cannot come and say we want this hundred dollars now it needs to be the year mark what they agreed to they have up until that time to pay the loan if the time of payment is due or if the creditor demands his loan uh, back his loan, the debtor is obliged to repay immediately. The loan must be repaid even if the debtor has to sell excess belongings or if he has to sell things at less than the market value. However, if he is compelled to sell at a, uh, a price where you are just throwing it away, basically, then it is not wajib on the debtor to sell those things. If the debtor does not have anything like carpet or clothes or household utensils or these things that he can sell and repay the loan, then he must take up a job suitable for his position. In all cases, he needs to fulfill the obligation to clear this debt from him. 
carelessness and laziness with regard to repayment of the loan are haram. It's a greater sin. If the debtor possesses only those things that are necessary for his life, like a small house and carpet and clothes, then it's not necessary for him to resell those essentials to, to repay this loan. The creditor cannot compel or force the person to sell these things. However, if the debtor wants to, res wants to sell them on his own accord, then he can do so. If the creditor and the creditor is allowed to accept that loan, but it is desirable that the creditor the creditor gives respite to the one who took the loan till the time Allah makes him capable of repaying those debts. It's related by Uthman ibn Ziyad. I informed Imam Sadiq salam that a person owed money to me and wished to dispose of his house to repay me. Upon hearing this, the Imam said three times. I seek Allah's refuge for, for you. Meaning that you are causing this poor man to sell his house, become homeless in order to pay you. Many other narrations have been mentioned about this type of uh, situation in the books of a Hadith. We have narrated from famous companion of Imam Qadam and Imam Rida salam, by Muhammad ibn Abi Umair that uh, he traded in cloth. It so happened that mounting losses pushed him to the brink of poverty. One of his debtors owed him 10,000 dirhams. When he learned of the companion's misfortune, he sold his house and bought, brought the money to repay the amount that he owed. Muhammad ibn Omer, he inquired if he had received the amount of 10,000 dirham for inheritance maybe. And when he said no, he asked if he received it maybe as hadiyah or gift from someone. Again, he said no. But I have sold the house where I lived so that I can repay my debt to you. Muhammad ibn Abi Omer, he, he related a saying of Imam Sadiq salam, prohibiting a creditor to force his debtor to sell his house and said, Wallahi, at present I am in need of everything that you have to give me, but I cannot take single dirham from this. Actually, Muhammad ibn Abi Omer was a rich man having assets worth more than uh, half million dirham. His present state of poverty was because of his closeness to Imam Qadim alayhi salam. Due to this, he was imprisoned for four years. He was beaten without mercy. The tyrant caliph confiscated all his belongings. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on the madlumin, those who are oppressed. It's an established fact that if someone deprives a person of his rights, then, then each day that passes makes him liable to a sin which is equal to collecting a 10% tax that was collected on order of the tyrant ruler. We have hadith from Imam Bakr salam, that says the, the martyr in the way of Allah is absolved of every sin except for the unpaid debt, which, he, which has no substitute. Repaying the debt is a must, the, or the creditor can forgive this. Moreover, he has remarked, as soon as the first drop of the blood of a shaheed is spilled, all his sins are forgiven, except for the unpaid debt, which is not excused. Its forgiveness can only be achieved by repaying that debt. So the gravity of all this can be ascertained from the incident when a person from the Ansar uh, died. He departed this world. He had left behind an unpaid debt of what? One million dirham, one thousand dirham, one hundred dirham. No, not he. He only owed two dinar. Something small, something insignificant that we would not even pay attention to. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa ala refused to pray salatul mayit for this person till one of his relatives took the responsibility to repay this debt. Two dinar, that's it. Imagine you owed someone two dollars and uh, they didn't want to do Salatul Mayyit. The Rasulullah wouldn't do it until you someone paid that money. This is how important it is to pay the debt. When Muawiyah ibn Wahhab asked Imam Sadiq salam, about this narration, the Imam replied, this is authentic narration. And the Prophet saying conveys the same meaning that people should derive a lesson from it and understand the seriousness of the debt. 
they should not regard it as something insignificant and must make it a point to repay those debts. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein alayhi salam were all having some debts when they left this world. But they appointed people to repay those debts after they passed away. So this hadith signifies that it's not prohibited to be in debt, you know, but to ignore the delay of the repayment of the debt is what is haram. So if we have the ability to repay it, we should repay it. It's not even advisable to go for Hajj or to travel to Mecca or Medina without first clearing one's debts. Uh, one of the companions asked Imam Bakr salam, regarding this, I wish to go and settle down in Mecca or Medina, but I am in debt to some people here. Imam told him, go home, first repay your debts. It must not be that you die in this condition and meet your Lord while you are in debt. For a believer never does khayanat, misappropriation of trust. So we see that this hadith makes it clear that not fulfilling someone's rights or delaying the repayment of debt equals misappropriation of trust. And all the traditions that we mentioned before are uh, applicable to, uh, to this. And they have described this as a type of oppression. Uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi announced that a Muslim who in spite of being capable of uh, delays the repayment of the debt has committed oppression upon all the Muslims. Not repaying the debt is a kind of oppression upon the creditor. In fact, it's such an act of oppression that the, uh, it's on the Muslims in general. This is because on seeing, you know, that on, upon seeing that this person in spite of being able capable to repay this debt, he didn't. Uh, then others who witness this, you know, they are capable of lending money to other, they will be discouraged to do so for fear of meeting the similar fate of not being repaid. Lending is a good act, and anyone who is res responsible for discouraging it has indeed impressed all of the Muslims. Because due to their actions of ignoring the debt, they have created instability in society. Where now people who are trusting of other people, now they have become suspicious and they don't want to give the money and they are hesitant in giving loans because they are afraid they won't be repaid. And this will affect all of society. And perhaps someone who really needed the money, now he can't get the money because the the mistrust that is in society now. Imam Sadiq salam, says, May Allah curse the one who closed the door of good actions. And this is the one who is not thankful to the one who has done some good towards him. Consequently, the doer of good refrains from doing the same favor towards someone else in the future. So certainly lending is something that is good. Not repaying or causing undue delay in the repayment is disregarding or casting aside the favor that is done towards him. And it can result in the creditor avoiding lending his money to anyone else in the future. So we could be oppressing multiple people. Maybe someone really needs this money and now they can't get it because of our actions. As called mistrust in society. <clears throat> so I think this is uh, sufficient for this uh, portion. And inshallah we'll pick back up in the next session inshallah sallallahu ala muhammad wa ala muhammad allahumma salli ala muhammad wa ala muhammad